Welcome back to the Perlworks channel. My name is John. I'm getting started on a very small dining table. It's going to be about 26 inches by 26 inches, and it's going to be about 31 inches tall. So this is a very small table, and it's only going to be able to seat about two people. But that's exactly what the customer wanted. It's from my friend Rob, who also happens to be the first person that ever bought a piece from me. So thanks, Rob. To start things off, I'll mill up some material for the legs. This is going to be square stock, so I'll get them jointed on two faces, and then I'll take it over to the planer to get it milled down to 1 and 15 16 by 1 and 15 16 The reason I did that is because I didn't have material thick enough to do a full 2 inches, and I also did not want to laminate material together. Then I could take some time to mill up the stretcher material. Each stretcher was going to be made up of three different pieces, one horizontal piece and two vertical pieces. Here is the horizontal piece that's going to be cut down to about 20 inches long, and then two of the vertical pieces, which will be about four inches long. These will be glued together and make a nice curved stretcher that blends into the leg. To join the stretcher pieces, I'm using some dowels because they are essentially a butt joint, so they need a little bit of reinforcement. I'm using the longest dowels that I could fit here. In this case, it's going to be a three inch dowels. I'll get them nice and glued up and then make sure that they're square. With the four stretchers glued up, I could turn my attention to the top. This is going to be a solid cherry top made of three wide pieces. I got started with my little planer sled so that I could get a nice flat surface on one side. After I did that, I could flip it over and use that flat surface as my new reference surface to get everything planed down to a nice final dimension. After joining the edges to make sure they went together smoothly, without any gaps. I use some dowels to act as alignment pins and then get these boards glued up. I made sure to keep in mind where the dowels would be so that when I trim this down to its final dimensions there would be no exposed dowels. With the stretchers dried I could run them through the drum sander to make sure that all of the surfaces were nice and flush. I couldn't do this with the planer because I have two different grain directions. It will probably get a lot of tear out on those vertical stretchers. And once again I'm using dowels to join the legs of the stretchers. I've used this on a lot of my builds and I've had no issues with it so far and it's been pretty simple for me. Each joint's going to have two dowels that join it together. This is going to be a long grain to long grain joint, but I am using them for alignment purposes so that I have a consistent reveal on all of the joints. And I made sure to keep these vertical stretchers square so that I could have a nice clamping surface to make sure that the joint was closed completely. With two of the side assemblies glued up, I could begin routing the curved feature of the stretcher. I'm using a little template here that I made with a compass and I could take it to the bandsaw to get rough cut and then I'll move on to the router with a flush trim bit. I had to add a larger sub base to the router so that it could keep its balance on the awkward positioning of this cut. You can see that there's not much support. I'm only supporting the router on the leg because the stretcher itself is recessed a little too far to have some support for the router. I made sure to take this pretty slow taking small cuts and I didn't want to go too close to the straight part of the stretcher or the leg because I didn't want to eat into the material. I would rather come back and sand those flush by hand. With those two sub assemblies done, I could glue them together with the two remaining stretchers. Then I'll clamp them up and make sure everything is nice and square. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to leave the vertical portions of the stretchers square so that I could clamp them evenly, but this left me in an awkward situation here with the jigsaw, but I was able to get it done without any errors. Then I was able to clamp the table to my workbench and then route out the rest of the curved portions of these stretchers. This was just the same as before and I didn't have any hiccups and everything turned out nice.
After routing, I did the rest of the blending with some sandpaper. And for some added strength, I installed these corner braces using a lag screw. With the base all but done, I could turn my attention back to the tabletop and get it flushed up at the drum sander. This is a great application for this open-ended drum sander. This piece right here is about 27 inches wide and was pretty easy to do just making two passes at each height. To get the top to its final dimensions, I used the track saw as well as the table saw. This piece ended up being about 25 and 15 sixteenths by 25 and 15 sixteenths, which is my new favorite number. I recently got this new Bosch sander that has this anti-vibration stuff. And it's a lot easier on your hand, and I'm trying to do a better job with dust collection. So I got a new hose and a shop vac, and it seems to be working out well. One of the other design elements is a slight chamfer on the underside of the top, as well as chamfers on the top and bottom of the legs. I like using a slot cutting bit to cut the grooves and the stretchers. These will be used to hold the tabletop fasteners, which will fasten the top to the base. This comes in pretty handy if you don't have a biscuit joiner. The last step before finish is to add the Perilla Works brand and remember how easy cherry burns. The finish I'm using is some wipe on poly. The first coat I use a mix of half mineral spirits and half wipe on poly. This is essentially a seal coat and it really behaves like a seal coat of shellac. It's super thin and gets absorbed really quickly but I still wipe it dry to make sure that the next coat goes on really smooth. After that, I added two to three more coats of regular wipe on poly, making sure to wipe dry completely after each coat. With the finish done, I could screw in the fasteners and call it a table. That wraps this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I like the chamfer on the inner side of the table along with the top of the legs. I think it gives it a subtle floating look and I'm also pretty happy with how the curved stretcher turned out. Thanks for watching.